Hello, fellow crafters. This is Yana Smakula for SimonSaysTM.com. Welcome back for another Yippee for Yana video. I have been trying to keep busy lately by doing watercoloring, and I've grown to really enjoy it. I love to color in general, but I seem to never have enough time in the day to dedicate the proper amount of time that watercolor needs. I typically color with alcohol markers, as I find that to be faster. Now, during the quarantine, I finally have all the time I need to color pretty images with watercolors. For today's project, I pulled out an older CM set from Simon. This is More Spring Flowers. It is a beautiful floral set, particularly fitting for spring. I also prepared a sheet of watercolor paper. This is my favorite paper of all times, Arches Cold Pressed Watercolor Paper. And I also have a Distress Ink Pad in color old paper. I'm going to do a no-line watercolor look today, and it seems that this color of Distress Ink, old paper, works the best for no-line coloring. I stamped all of the images that I had in mind onto my watercolor panel and proceeded to color. I found that I like to affix my panel on the back of my MISTI stamping tool. I use the large bar magnet to hold the panel in place and use the surface of the MISTI as a sturdy surface to color on. I've been coloring everywhere but in my craft room, several times on my balcony enjoying the fresh air, and where I don't have a table to rest the panel on, using the back of the MISTI as I do here is very helpful as it provides a nice large surface for my work. I also have my watercolor palette to the right. I'm left-handed and I like to keep the coloring mediums to the right of my project. These are all watercolors by Daniel Smith, and I talk more about my favorite watercolor colors in this palette setup in a separate video that is available on my YouTube channel if you'd like to check it out. I also have this little blending surface from Marvi Uchida. This is something that I picked up during a trade show I visited in Frankfurt, Germany back in January 2020. And I have been using this handy little tool as a blending surface. You can also use the inside of your watercolor palette similarly or you can laminate a piece of chipboard and that will work just as well. For my coloring today, I'm using a medium water brush. This is a water brush from Tonic Studios. It holds a nice amount of water and I find I don't even need a separate water container on my desk when I have this water brush. I also have two actual water brushes, or paint brushes, I should say. These are silver black velvet brushes in size 2 and size 4. I will be coloring using the smallest size 2 brush, as the lines and details are so fine on this image. And then I'll use the size 4 brush, mostly as a thirsty brush, to soak up any excess water or pigment during my coloring. Another thing I will be using is a paper napkin, again, to soak up access water from the brush or my paper. Now, watercoloring is not quick. You need to have the time to fully enjoy the process, and you also need to have the time to have good results. Rushing watercolor will only result in a big mess. I'm far from being a watercolor pro, but that doesn't stop me from trying and practicing and enjoying this amazing coloring medium. When it comes to coloring flowers, you need to color one petal at a time. You cannot color the whole flower at once, as the ink will just bleed and make a big mess. So prepare yourself and get ready to color each one of those petals you see on the flower by itself. As you color, you also need to move from petal to petal that does not touch each other. As if they touch, again, the ink might and will most likely bleed and all your watercolor efforts will be in vain. I like to begin by using my water brush to wet the petal. Next, I come in with a paint brush holding a small amount of pigment and I work my brush to distribute the pigment on the petal. I come back and bring more pigment to the areas I want to be darker. By wetting the paper first, I'm simplifying the process. The water does a lot of work for me and moves the pigment on the paper. This method is called wet on wet. Here I'm using just one color to color this flower. This is quinacridone gold. Because I'm working with water and diluting the pigment, 
it might look as if I'm using several shades of yellow to color the flower, when in fact, this is all just one color, quinacridone gold. As I color the individual petals, you can see that I pick the petals that do not touch. This way, the water and the pigment have time to dry and set on the paper. It is not going to bleed into a petal next to it when I come back. When you watercolor something, you need to work in layers. Doing just one layer is ever hardly enough. And once you finish applying the first initial layer of color onto the paper, you will need to let it dry, and then you need to come back with additional color to deepen the shadows and define the image even further. And that I again do using the same quinacridone gold color. Watercolor is very forgiving and it is very easy to fix if you've made a mistake. I like to make myself a delicious cup of coffee or tea, play some music in the background and spend hours and hours coloring away these days. If I can, I go outside and enjoy the fresh air while I'm coloring. Now overall, this piece took me about three hours to color. I'm not going to include all of that footage in this video as that will make it far too long, but I am including the most important parts. Here I moved on to coloring the leaves. This time, instead of adding clean water to the image to wet it, I'm actually applying a little bit of color with the water. This will speed up the coloring process a little bit. Once the first layer is applied, and while the image is still wet, I come in with my detail paintbrush and add more pigment to the base of the leaves and the stem to create shadows. I keep working on this image, keep adding more pigment in very small quantities until I'm happy with the result. I am speeding up most of my coloring in this video, and it is sped up quite a lot, but I do take my time and I color this very slowly and patiently to have the results that I want. With all of the coloring done, I used coordinating dies and cut these images out in my deep sea die cutting machine. It is sitting off camera. My plan for this card was to decorate a foiled frame with watercolor imagery. I have already foiled several panels in various colors of foil. Now do watch my previous episode, Yippee for Yana video, for tips on hot foiling. I'm not going to show the foiling process in this video. I used a new Glimmer hot foil plate by Spellbinders. This is geometric floral, and I just foiled it in several colors in the centers of my panel. I used various colors of cardstock for foiling, and I also used various colors of foil. This is how I typically like to foil, actually. I foil the same image several times using my go-to cardstock colors and my go-to foil colors. And then I just save the rest of the foiled images for future projects. Now at this point, I wasn't sure which foiled panel I liked the most, and I just played around a little bit until I found one I liked more. And no surprise there, it was white panel foiled with regular gold foil. Before I adhered everything in place, I decided to add some definition to my colored images using colored pencils. I love to combine watercolor and colored pencils, as with the pencil, I'm able to add really nice and fine details to my images, something that is very hard to do using a paintbrush. I used my polychromos pencils to add details to the crocuses. The crocuses were colored using Imperial Gold Daniel Smith watercolor, and I used mauve pencil number 249 polychromos from Fiber Castell. I also used a white pen to clean up any of the edges where the watercolor bled a little bit. And again, this part is sped up quite a bit. I wasn't rushing at all when I was coloring, and I was just really meticulous, and I was really taking the time when coloring this image. Next, I've figured out the image placement I like the most in my panel. You can see that I've trimmed the foil panel to 3 and 3 quarters by 5 inches, and I've arranged the images on top. I took a photo with my phone so that I was able to recreate the arrangement easily, and then I used Simon's tacky glue to adhere all of the pieces in place. I also shaped many of the leaves using my fingers to make them slightly more dimensional. I used foam adhesive squares to foam mount the main flower over the cluster. To create a sentiment for this card, I first foiled one that reads, From me to you. I used gold foil and white cardstock again 
And this was foiled using a more sentiments glimmer hot foil plate from Spellbinders. And I also added that onto a sub sentiment that reads, I love how happy I am when I'm with you. The sub sentiment comes from Simon's sentiment strip. I've come to really enjoy them lately. I used foam adhesive squares and foam mounted both sentiments onto the card just below my floral cluster. I foam mounted my panel onto an A2 craft card base and used several sequins from my stash to embellish it. I used stay gold sequins from Simon, several gold jewels, metallic gold jewels from Pretty Pink Posh, and several of the largest sequins from the star spangled sequin set from Simon Says Stamp to dress this card up. Here's a look at the finished card. You can see how beautifully that foiling shines in the background and complements the watercolor flowers. I hope you will give this idea a try. If you make a card inspired by this video, we'd love it if you shared your project online and tagged us on social media. We always enjoy seeing what you make. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and to subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet done so. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'll see you next time. Bye.